the channel. I'm Steve and this is Working On It. Today we're doing a review, one year review, on our Coyote tractor. We got a DK5310 SE Hydrostat cab and we've been running it hard on this hill for a year now and it's got 285 hours on it and had pretty pretty good use out of it, very minimal issues with it and I just want to go over a few things. I don't see too many long-term reviews. I see a lot of a lot of day two, day three, somebody makes a video, but I wanted to break down um, what we've seen with the tractor and what it does good, what's uh, not as good about it, and go over everything. So to start out, uh, at the time that we bought the tractor a year ago, we could pick turf tires or we could pick R14 tires. Uh, we ended up going with the R14s and they've been a great tire. Um, turf tires weren't going to work for us and I couldn't get ag tires. So, uh, been real happy with them. Um, the loader on this thing is a beast. Um, haven't had any of the bleed off issues that I've heard of. Guys say the hydraulics creep down. Um, this thing's been good. It's got that little bit of roll in the bucket that I'm not too sure about, but the dealer's going to take a look at that for me. Um, it's uh, three point is super strong, super fast. Don't have any complaints about that. The uh, PTO works really well with a tiller or brush hog, is what I have to run off of that. Um, I was a little concerned about the electronic knob on the dash for, for turning the PTO on and off, but that's worked flawlessly. I just was used to seeing a lever, and um, we bought a homestead up here that. Uh, had been abandoned for a period of time and uh, covered with junk, old cars, tractors, you name it. Um, the ground was too rough. You couldn't even drive a pickup out in the fields. Um, we've done a tremendous amount of uh, box scraper work, um, land grader work. We've rototilled acres with this thing. Um, I've had more T-posts and old car parts wrapped up in that poor old rototiller than, than you want to talk about. Um, I bought a bottom plow. I've bottom plowed about, oh, probably four acres with the bottom plow. Does great with that. That's a two bottom plow. Um, if you guys are curious, it's it pulls it just fine. It's got plenty of ground weight and uh, does a really good job at that. I run a five foot rototiller and it handles that really well. Uh, I also have a five foot brush hog. Wish I had a six foot brush hog, but they weren't available when I bought this thing and I, I uh, Craigslisted one and five footer does okay. So I'm um, sure this thing would run a six foot or seven foot brush hog with ease. Um, it just depends on how thick a grass you're going through. I can go through three foot field grass with the brush hog and it doesn't even lug it down. So that's really nice. Um, the AC works great in the cab. I went with a cab model. I got two little boys and I just wanted them inside the cab. I didn't want them falling off a fender or getting ran over or whatever. So they're inside that cab. One, they're safe. There's a spot on the left. My little boy sits and then my bigger boy, he's usually either helping me drive or he's leaning over against the side. Um, and these guys get cold or they get hot. So they just want to be with dad. So they're out on the tractor and they stay warm or stay cool and works out great. A um, little issue with fogging of the glass. I don't know if these things have any any better or worse airflow than other tractor brands. Um, but if you get out and you get all soaking wet and you get in this thing, if it's not uh, if it's not fully warmed up, it'll just poof instantly fog all the windows and you either got to crack a door open or open the rear panel. Um, I only got the front windshield wiper. Uh, I should have got the back windshield wiper too because at times, you know, it's snow or rain. It just, you got to put rain X on it or it's it's hard to see out of, especially at night. Um, the lights on these tractors, they seem really bright. They're kind of a, they're kind of a focused beam. They're almost like spotlights on the work lights. Um, and then the headlights are they're okay as long as you got the bucket at the right the right height, but you know half the time the bucket's blocking the headlights. So I do plan on upgrading to some LEDs. I've already bought the lights. I just haven't had time to put them in yet. Um, so I think that'll be a big hit is to upgrade the lighting. <laughs> So 
it's got the six foot woods box scraper on it a quick hitch on it R14 tires and really impressed with these mud snow dirt pavement they don't howl and hop was a little skeptical at first but I think they do pretty good rear ones are wearing really well front ones seem to not have as much left on them I really like this. This uh, makes it a breeze when you're hooking things up. Um, things like brush hogs and rototillers are the toughest things to hook to a tractor. Um, I use this quick hitch, it works great. Um, basically, just the ability to bump this a little bit at times when you're trying to get that PTO line hooked on. Uh, my rototiller, I've kind of got a system where I got a block of wood that it sits on and it seems to balance it. and uh, just having the ability to, as you're hooking up pins, be able to bump that to, uh, to get the attachment on there. Man, it, it really kills the frustration on these things. If you've ever uh, hooked up a lot of implements, you know how frustrating it can get when a, a two-minute job turns into ten times on and off the tractor. So I've heard guys having issues with their wheels falling off and their loader coming loose and bolts breaking. Um, I own lots of equipment, so I'm not out here bashing into stumps and, and bashing into concrete blocks in the ground. Um, I don't beat the machine, but I do work it very hard. And I have not had a wheel fall off. None of the loader bolts have ever come loose. I do check them pretty meticulously, you know, at least every, every eight hours when I'm greasing it or so. Um, haven't had any of the loader pins walk out. It's, it's been a really solid unit. Um, I, I do attribute a lot of that to the dealer that put the thing together. Um, you know, if, if the guy knows what he's doing and he's taking the time to put some Loctite on things and tighten them down right, uh, it goes a long ways, but definitely something to keep an eye on on these tractors. And it's not a coyote thing. It's literally all the brands. If the guy that, that assembled your tractor didn't do it right, you're going to have stuff work loose. If you don't catch that, um, you know, the first bolt comes loose and then the rest of them break, or you might waller out all the holes in a wheel and ruin a wheel, and now you're, you can be hundreds of dollars real quick. Um, you know, keep an eye on your loader bolts. I've never had any of mine move, but that can cause a lot of damage. So, um, going into, uh, what do we want to talk about here? Uh, the loader is extremely strong. Um, I've actually picked up a 72 Honda Civic with this thing. Um, you can put the forks through the windows and pick it up and set it on a trailer. Might not be recommended, but it'll do it. Um, I generally run this thing with the box scraper on the back for counterweight, as well as I have my rear tires filled with beet juice and our rim guard. If, uh, you know what that is, um... I was a little worried about the doors. That looks like a big expensive piece of glass, so I've been really careful with them to not slam them into anything, and uh, we haven't had any glass issues, so that's been great. Had zero roof leaks. Um, this thing does generally park inside, but uh, we work in some pretty rough weather out there and a lot of wind and haven't had any leaks. Um, the cab is just powder dry, quiet, comfortable. Um, the paint on this thing has been great. Uh, I was a little concerned, you know. Uh, it's not one of the big name brand machines. Um, the paint's awesome. I haven't had anything. I've got a couple little scratches in it, um, and it did not immediately rust underneath or anything, so that's been great. Uh, the rear defroster in the glass works good. Um, hydraulics seem really strong. 
Um, what else can we go over? Um, it does have pretty nice mirrors on it. The visibility out of this machine is, has been really good. The uh, four ways and everything when you're going down the road, I haven't had any lights burn out. Um, so lots of little lots of little things that you know can go wrong and I, I think coyote's building a heck of a tractor this is not a um, my impression of coyote when I started looking at them was my brother-in-law bought one and that was probably two years before I bought mine so I called him up and said hey what do you think of this thing and um, he had had the issues with the wheels coming loose he had had the issues with the loader coming uh, breaking bolts um, he's also a little bit rough on things so um, could be dealer prep could be him um, but uh, I talked to him and then I found out that coyotes not new I thought they were new they've been building uh, tractors for quite a few years and um, I think they build a heck of a tractor um, we had a minor couple minor issues so we had the alternator was a little bit loose so about three hours in uh, three hours on the meter um, I started the tractor up I was out working for about an hour and I hopped out and of course I forgot to put it in neutral or set the brake or something and it died and I went to restart it and it was stone dead so I had to put cables on it and jump start it got it going and then it did it again so I started poking around um, turned out to be the, uh, just the alternator belt was loose, so that's something to keep an eye on once in a while. These things are breaking in. Things are, are wearing in from new. Um, I also had one of the battery cables had a loose connection. Easy fix. Um, the, uh, above the three point on the back, there is the tiniest amount of weepage of oil that basically collects dust. It doesn't run down the case. It doesn't puddle on the ground. I don't have to add anything to it, but there's, a uh, it's either it's either uh, venting oil vapor out of there or there's a tiny leak um, and the three point on the back does slightly drop every few seconds and you'll feel the tractor pick it up and I don't notice at all when I'm running a box scraper a mower or anything but it'll it'll sag I don't know a half an inch and then it picks it up real quick so you'll notice that if you're if you're just watching it sit there with a heavy heavy implement like my woods box scraper is pretty heavy unit, um, or sometimes I'm running weights on the uh, on the land grader and to get it to bite in right. So um, I've talked to the dealer; they're going to take a look at all that, but I have to give up the tractor for you know a couple days or a couple weeks, whatever it takes them to fix it and get parts. And we use this thing uh, pretty much every day every weekend for sure so i it been very little minor things i haven't uh haven't wanted to lose my tractor in order to fix them so um the front bucket's got a little bit of roll movement um trying to think of anything else on this thing that hasn't been absolutely perfect um just been a really solid machine it always starts um cold starts man uh, if this thing is out in the snow and it's you know we were down to eight degrees and we don't get super cold here but eight degrees here is really cold and we uh, left it outside snowing and blowing eight degrees in the morning just did the normal glow plug cycle turning the key on and it the first cylinder that came up she was running it's not knocking and clanging and just sitting there purring away so these things start in the cold really nice and seems to be, I don't track it or anything, but it seems to be really efficient on fuel. So if you, you fill the tank on this thing and it, it runs a lot of hours. So pretty happy with that. Hydrostat's really smooth. The gearing's good. It's got great torque pulling a plow in low range. It's got, you know, it bombs down the road. If you're going to get, uh, going to help the neighbors or something, you can, you can cover some ground in the high range too. And I generally run it in mid-range. Old beat up two AA streamlight. And it is 
quite a bit brighter and carries way more light. So we're gonna do a, gonna probably upgrade to LED here. As far as actually being able to uh, see what you're doing to grade with, um, I just can't really uh, can't really see enough out of this thing to. You know, for just a second, I can see it as it goes out the back of the box scraper, but, you know, if I, uh, if I drag this stuff along for a minute, and let's just go up here, we'll leave a little pile, dig in a little bit here. Okay, so we'll, we'll leave a pile, you can see it, but... Right now, I can barely see that pile now, so, you know, that's, I just like more, more visibility for situational awareness. You know, if I'm backing along, I'm not going to see a T-post or something sticking out at me, so, so we're going to fix that. still here so uh, for the most part this machine has uh, has beat all of our expectations um, anything that we were concerned about buying it has gone by the wayside uh, the, the paint's been great the cab's been great um, the overall function of the machine the power it doesn't overheat it doesn't even get warm on a hot day when you're pulling a bottom plow box scraper brush hogging rototill in hot weather cold weather it's got a great heater in it um, cab comforts good um, really happy with everything about it you know like like I've mentioned there's there's a few little things and basically I need to make an appointment with the dealer and get it down there and they'll have it for a little bit and I'll get it back it'll be perfect at that point so um, I would highly recommend one of these um, the only thing that would be a real turning point would be if you don't have a good dealer near you then that's kind of a problem um, they got dealers all over but you know if, if you've got a really good Kubota dealership right down the street and it's six hours to a Coyote dealership that would sway me a little bit um, aside from that I I really feel good about this machine we just put another oh good 10 hours on it uh, this weekend doing a bunch of work around here hodgepodge of a little bit of everything and so we're almost 300 hours now and you know I just watched uh, a poll on Good Works Tractors channel and uh, most people only use their tractor like I don't know 25 50 hours a year and you know we do that a we do that a month so I guess we're we're really using the machine so um, it's only been a year but it's been I guess more more hours than most people will put on one of these things in five years so you might consider that uh, depending on how much hours you really put on a machine this is a pretty good rundown for it so um, still cranking away we'll continue to use it and rack the hours up and uh, I'll I'll probably do some more updates as we go along and I'll probably I've, I've only been doing the video thing just recently so I'll probably dig through my phone see what I can add to uh, maybe a second video on this and show off some of the pictures that I've taken over the last year of it and in action so 
Um, if you if you like what you're seeing, uh, throw us a like and uh, leave a comment if you got other topics you'd like us to go over. Thanks for watching.